In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the sacroiliac joint and then some of the bony landmarks associated to the two components here. These are actually real, real bones that was donated to me, so I thought I would do a talk because I hope it will help you to understand this fascinating area of the body. Okay, before we go to the SI joint, so this will be one part of the pelvis here, okay, so the left side in here. So this is known as the innominate bone. Now the innominate bone makes up three bones, and then this will be known as the ilium, this will be known as the pubis, and then this will be known as the ischium, okay? And then we have different parts named depending on where they are located. We've also got the socket, which is known as the acetabulum, and then that is forming the iliofemoral joint, which is the hip joint. Inside here, it is conjoined, so part of ilium, part of ischium, part of pubis will conjoin in here. And then we've got this fibro cartilage called the acetabular labrum all the way around, which provides stability because it deepens the socket. On the ischium, we've got the ischial tuberosity along here, where the hamstrings mainly attach, on here. This is actually known as the obturator foramen, this hole in here, the obturator forearm and foramen. The pubic tubercle would be located here, okay, obviously this would be the pubic synthesis joint between the right side and the left side, okay, so a tubercle here, and that would be where the inguinal ligament will attach, coming down under the rectus abdominis, for example. This is the pectineal line along here, and we've got the ramus of pubis coming down, okay. This is called the iliac fossa, where the iliacus muscle will attach along here. This is known as the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, where the sartorius will attach. This is the anterior inferior iliac spine, where the rectus femoris will attach. This is the iliac crest along here. This is known as the ischial spine along here, and it will have a ligament called the sacrospinous ligament that will attach. So that's called the ischial spine along here. This hole is called the greater sciatic foramen, which will form part of the passage, if you like, for the sciatic nerve, which comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. This is called the PSIS, which is known as the posterior superior iliac spine. There's also a PIS as well, so posterior inferior iliac spine here, but we don't tend to discuss that too often. And obviously the glute will attach to this gluteal fossa like around this area, depending on which muscle we are talking about. Okay, on the sacrum, we have a corner here called the inferior lateral angle, where the sacrotuberous ligament comes in, so it's called the ILA. We have the sacral spines along here, and typically the PSIS of the innominate would be in level with S2. This will be the facet joint of S1, okay, here, where L5 will sit on there. So this will be the superior facet, and then L5 inferior facet will sit on there to be called the LS, the lumbar sacral junction. Naturally, this body, if you like, will be where the disc of L5, S1 disc will sit in here. On the lateral side, we've got this, like, ear shape, known as the auricular surface. So this would be part of the sacrum. It is actually called something called the, uh, the short arm and the long arm, uh, but it's mainly for the motion. We don't need to discuss it in this video. But when we're looking at this area and we bring these together, sorry, I'm just working on my bearings where we are, so left side, confusing myself here. So if we place one together, so if you're looking at this, so we've got the auricular surface here and the auricular. So naturally when we place them together, that will form the sacroiliac joint. Just make sure it's on. There. It's almost like a jigsaw puzzle, this one. There we go. Like that. Okay. So the PSIS is roughly in line with S2. Okay, coming there. Okay, coming across the wall. In this one, it looks like it's between S1 and S2. Okay, but if we look at the inferior part, it's around the S2 just there. 
The SI joint is a synovial joint. There's not much movement. It's debatable how much movement, but it's very minimal. Okay, maybe one to two degrees you know, of motion. Uh, maybe one to two millimeters of you know, translation. Okay, so it's hardly anything. Um, many ligaments will cross over it, and I'll discuss that in another talk. Um, but it is classified as a synovial joint because it has synovial fluid and synovial membrane. And when we talk about this bone on this, so we normally talk about the ilium moving on the sacrum, but then the sacrum is also capable of movement on the ilium. So then we'll say sacroiliac motion. Okay, but again, I would have done many videos on talks about that. So for this video, I just wanted to talk to you about one, the innominate bone and the components of, and the sacrum, place them together to be called the SI joint, but how it actually looks on a real human skeleton. I hope you've enjoyed the talk and thank you for watching.